And if I can go into live action, this school bus just became the set for the actual spaceship. So when I'm talking about doing my bus conversion, it's going towards spaceship motif, not RV. Cool? Hello, and welcome to, um, well, Carlin's Worlds. Yeah, that should work. I'm a wanderer, a tinkerer, sometimes a nomad, a military veteran. I do things differently. There will be tinkering. I have a motorcycle, a truck, and a school bus. I live off-grid, so there will be some solar, batteries, inverters, and maybe even some wind. It blows. And that's all I can fit into about 30 seconds. Oh, and please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon, if you're really an awesome kind of person. Cool, on with the show already. Okay, status update, did a little more cleaning. I got everything off of that seat sitting on this seat. That might be how this ends up for a while too. Let that be for now. Next thing is I'm getting ready to try to take out this. I did disconnect the battery, so electrically we're isolated now, or dead, or quiet, or cold, or whatever. This is what the console looks like when I'm starting. Now it's made to, um, it's where you can take the front face off and get to the wires behind it. All right. So here's one for dome, clearance lamps. That's actually the two I'm interested in. Heater control, heat, um, air, fresh, uh, reheat, panel dimmer. A bunch of these are blank offs. Flies in my face. Fan controls, two more fans, washer wiper way down there. So there really isn't that many switches. I mean, uh, two, three, four, about eight switches. Some of these are just glow panels. These are panel illuminators, a little light that shines across so you can see them. And then your two, I think these are your um, stopper lights. So not really much going on there. I think the heater is down inside here, one of the heaters. Because that's where all the, like there's a control valve down here and so on. So, um, so I'm going to take out this piece first. And then I'm going to see how much of this I can take out. And maybe by the end of the day I'll have the steering wheel out. Alright, this is kind of for my own remembering because I never really did get a clear shot of what this looks like when it's all put together, so I just want to kind of remember it. Uh, and I learned literally just enough to be dangerous when I bought this thing, but the biggest things to remember down here is your air gauges. It's actually two different needles on that same gauge, so you got left and right tank. And actually there's three tanks, so I guess two of them are hooked together, so one always took a little longer to fill up it seemed like. Also, there's probably a leak. There's no park on this gear selector. Yeah. So you just leave it in neutral, and then when you get it running, enough to release the air brakes, that's your air brake parking controller. And then you're off to the races. And on this particular bus, you had to have a pretty good fast idle to get air pressure to come up. Once you were running, you were fine, but at low idle, no, it would never build up enough air pressure. The belt was slipping too much. I just wanted a moment to remember it. I don't have a lot of experience driving the bus. It was literally, I bought it San Antonio. I lived in Austin at the time, so I drove, you know, I don't know however far that is. I bought it and then made payments on it a few months, left it on the lot. Some of this is forward, forward-looking statements, so it's good that we're looking forward. Also, if you've ever seen the mascot, it's a wig, model head, whatever, styrofoam head. Okay. Literally, one of the reasons I'm out here in the first place, when it comes right down to it, is, well, I needed some place to call home, 
and I'd moved around so much and every time I would move I would get rid of a bunch of stuff and start over somewhere else you know it'd be as much as I could carry and the rest I'd drag to the curb kind of thing I moved to Texas on my motorcycle it was like the one I have but this is not the exact one but it's you know virtually identical different year but otherwise identical so I came to Texas on a motorcycle and then since then look at all the stuff I've got right so okay so I've talked a little bit about Marsh Clipper on a couple of the other videos but I don't talk much about it yet Marsh Clipper is a story project that I've been working on for well okay there is a project before Marsh Clipper that I started on in 2008 2009 something like that so about 10 years and then about the time I got to Austin which I forget what year that was 2011 2012 something like that then I was looking at it one time and I kind of backed off and you know I'd work on it for a couple of weeks really excitedly and then I'd forget about it for a couple of months and then a year later I'd find it again and I'd be all excited and finally one day I was sitting there looking at it and dusted it off again and I'm like you know what there's I didn't really like the basic core of the story so I I don't, I don't remember the exact reasoning but I, I just kind of like well let me just maybe I can rewrite the whole thing you know so I came up from a different angle and at some point I just went completely in a different direction and what was the old project became Mars Clipper. And I put an enormous amount of thought into the backstory and how it all came together. It wasn't just like, you know, some little whim of a story. I put a lot of time and effort into it. Didn't write on it very consistently again, but off and on I'd pull it out, I'd work on it. And on, well, it's hard to say how many actual pages it is right now but it could be a war and peace. I mean, it's got, there's parts of it that I just went on and on and on about minute details that probably would never make the final cut. Well, at some point in there, and I always say that I came up with the idea for Mars Clipper and the one before it, long before I was aware of Andy Weir and the Martian. Um, and I sometimes will say that Mars itself isn't uh, exactly a, a unique idea. You know, obviously it's a real place. You know, we're not talking about, you know, Star Wars where it's all fictitious. You know, the Martian, he went to Mars. That was the whole idea. And we've been talking about going to Mars ever since we went to the moon in real life. You know, this was something that we thought collectively, especially the science geeks, we're very disappointed that we haven't gotten people to Mars yet. And, you know, realistically, some of it was technical. We don't yet have solutions to some of the problems still. And some of it was the American people kind of like got bored. You know, it's like, well, we got to the moon. Okay, check. You know, nobody really collectively got excited about going to Mars the way that when President Kennedy, Kennedy said, we're going to the moon, the nation united around that. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of people said it was stupid to go to the moon. You know, no, nobody had ever gone there before, and why would you bother? But it seemed to be a matter of national pride, and that seems to be something we're lacking, you know, in the last couple of generations, that, you know, people were pretty excited about the space shuttle, and then after a while, and nobody watched the news when the space shuttle launched. I mean, you know, when they first launched the first few space shuttles, network TV stopped and watched the space shuttle launch. And then it became something that, well, you know, maybe some channels would pick it up, but they wouldn't sit there and everybody watch it like it used to be. So anyway, um, but I was always aware of when we were going to Mars, as far as, you know, the rovers, spirit and opportunity, you know, um, I don't know, what are the, you know, I used to be all, all up on that kind of stuff. Anyway, so we got the two little rovers and then the bigger rover that's still, yeah, Spirit and Opportunity and then Curiosity is the nuclear powered one. It doesn't need solar panels. Um, but I, I remember every time something like that would happen, I'd be sitting there, especially the later ones when they started using the internet more, and you could look at the pictures of Mars on your computer and it's like, wow, this is great, you know. 
and uh, at some of the pictures they were actually in 3d and so i bought a pair of red blue glasses so i could look at them in 3d and it was just like you were just sitting there looking at it it's like you were there you know you could look around a little bit and see behind the rock a little bit and it was it was very you know very cool and in a way that might be some of why i have such a strong feeling towards the ranch that i'm on I mean, there is a lot more vegetation out here than I expected, but at its core, I still see the rocks in the soil and it's not quite the right color, but there's times where, in fact, okay, the very first time I, I came out here to camp for a long weekend, a couple of years before I moved out here, I had just bought the book, The Martian, and I sat out here and read the book. And it, it, I was just, I was there. You know, it's hilarious. You know, when I think back about it, I was like, yeah, I was, I was reading The Martian, sitting out here in the sand, and I was just, I could just imagine it, you know. Even though, yeah, there's vegetation everywhere. There's, you know, bunny rabbits and rattlesnakes and sagebrush and mesquite and, you know, all, all of the elements that aren't on Mars. But if I looked out at the hills, I'm like, yeah, you can't see the vegetation on the hills. And so you kind of just kind of block it from your view and look above the vegetation and I felt like you were there. So that's, that's kind of my little thing. Okay, so one of the things that I had been looking at, and I don't think I bought the bus specifically because of this, but the story before Mars Clipper, I was writing it when I lived in Canada, part of it. And at the time I was living on my mom's property, she had a little office trailer like you'd see at a construction site. She had picked it up at an auction sale. She had actually bought it for her dogs. She was raising uh, little Pomeranian dogs. And uh, so she'd buy these old trailers and let the dogs live in them, you know, and then uh, I needed a place to go for a while. So I kind of camped out at my mom's property. And so I cleaned up the, the dog trailer, one of the dog trailers, and was I was living in there for a while. And when I was writing my story about Mars, my story, a lot of it was in the spaceship getting there. And to get to Mars, it's about 200 days of just sitting in the tin can on the way to Mars. Well, the little trailer I was in became the spaceship when I was riding it, you know. I mean, I didn't do a lot to it. I was just like, this is what it would be like to be in here for a long period of time. Now, obviously, I'd come out and, you know, go do other things. So I wasn't just stuck. I wasn't in the trailer for 200 days, thankfully. But I got used to that small amount of space. Well, when I started writing Mars Clipper, the spaceship became bigger, but one of the main parts of the spaceship that I spend, was going to spend a lot of time in is about the size of the school bus. I don't think I did that exactly on purpose, but I started laughing when I realized how big the bus was. I'm like, this is totally the command pod, right? Now, in Mars Clipper, there's different parts to the spaceship, and so you don't spend all your time in one, in one part. But when I was thinking about the cockpit part of the command pod, the part where all your, all your instruments were going to be, I started this uh, when I was in Austin, the rewrite. And at one point I figured out, okay, it's going to be this big. I think I figured eight feet across, which is really close to how big the bus is. And I took what, this this was supposed to be a really good idea, and it didn't turn out very well. So I, I took a green whiteboard marker, and I took a piece of string, and I made a nice, smooth half circle on the wall. You know, you're not supposed to draw on the walls of your apartments because you don't get your deposit back. But I was like, okay, so I, I, I tested it first. I took a little bit of the green marker, and I marked the wall, and I took my eraser, and I, it came right off. I'm like, okay, this is great. So I took my string, I made it a, you know, four-foot radius, I think, and I just put a, you know, held it in the middle and did a circle on the wall. That was the outline of my spaceship. And I was literally, I was thinking about buying probably styrofoam insulation, and I was going to build the cockpit section of my spaceship in my living room in my apartment in Austin. And I never got around to actually doing that, but the seats that I sit on now, I bought because of that project. I set them on casters pretty low. They're actually out of a car. They're Mercedes seats out of a 450, I think, or something like that. I picked them up on Craigslist. 100 bucks for the set. They're leather. They're amazing. They're very comfortable. So I bought the seats, put them on casters so that they would sit on the ground, 
and I put them in front of where my computers were and I designed what the cockpit was going to look like. And it was your typical geek science fiction cockpit for a spaceship, so it had all kinds of monitors and everything in there. And when I was writing, I was sitting in the seat writing about the spaceship and it was, it was really easy to do then because you're sitting in the spaceship. I never did build the roof. It was just kind of like, well, okay, it's close enough, right? More bugs. So I went ahead and, you know, drew the line and I set up all the cockpit so that I could sit in there. And thankfully I never got around to actually building the rest of it and it stayed like that for a year and a half or something like that and then finally it was time to move out and that perm or that that erasable marker had became permanent and no you could not get that off i'm like oops <laughs> so i'm pretty sure i never got my deposit back on on that apartment anyway moving forward then i started looking at the school bus at the time and i'm like the bus is about the right size length and width and you know height and everything like that so what I've decided is I, I didn't wait for this reason, but you know, a year and a half later, I have not really done any of the bus conversion like you would think of. Like, you know, you would take out the seats and then you would do insulation and maybe replace some windows and then set up your electrical and set up your plumbing and then you'd live in it. Well, when I brought the bus out here, the bus already was partially full of stuff, plus it still had the seats. Then I took all the seats out, but my stuff was still in here. And then I brought several pickup loads worth of stuff from Austin out to here. So, and then I had about two days before I started my next job. And it became a kind of a thing where, yeah, I'm completely full of stuff in here. I didn't have anywhere to store anything. I didn't want to put my stuff in storage in town because then you pay for it twice, you know, and more. So I, I would make little tunnels through the piles and then I'd eventually find something I needed. And you know, there was a lot of that agony of where is all my stuff? It's back here somewhere. Well, and I, I didn't have enough room to do a conversion because I needed to get stuff out of here and I didn't have anywhere to put it. A little bit, I've kind of squirreled stuff away, different spots. Some of it, you know, I put in the little camper shell that's on this side now. Um, I had built a truck camper and then I put that back on the ground and I use that for storage now. So I've got some stuff sitting in there. And, you know, like part of it too, I had the computer that used to be right behind this seat is, is you know, another desk like the one that I'm still using where I usually do my videos from. So going forward, what I'm looking at now, at all of this, none of the driver's compartment in the bus is going to suit me for what I want to do, all right? Uh, I mean, not just the school bus or the spaceship idea, but if I ever decide to drive this bus again, I don't need any of the switch panel here. I don't need the heater box that blows heat back for the kids because I don't got 70 kids. I don't have any kids. So I look at all this stuff, I'm like, okay, I'm very likely never going to drive the bus again. Okay, so I don't need all this stuff. And even if I was going to drive the bus again, it would be converted to a motorhome type of a situation. And I still wouldn't need any of this stuff. And because I used to be a mechanic, I look at some of this stuff, I'm like, okay, this is fairly easy to take apart. I can move it. All right. So now what I'm looking at is if this is actually, you know, the right size for the cockpit, I could build part of my spaceship set here. Uh, another idea that I have considered, and it's not off the table yet, but the cockpit for the spaceship should have place for two seats. The second one would be where the door is. All right. I have a background in things like fixing airplanes for the military. So when I look at this, and, I, and when I say this is possible, I, I know how I would do it. It's just a matter of if, if it's worth the time and the money, but it is definitely doable. I could fill in the floor where the stairs are, remove the door, go back about eight or 10 feet, make a new door, make a real proper, kind of like a house door that you know, would open with a doorknob instead of how the bus door opens and then close off the hole where the door was 
and set myself up so I had matching left and right sides with no door in the way. Then I could build my cockpit the way it's supposed to be. All right. Now, the, the station back here where I do my, well, where I normally would be sitting, I've got a 24 inch monitor. I actually own three of them that match. And I had three monitors because I was going towards the spaceship idea. So my idea was, well, you'd have three monitors. And then you'd also have littler computer monitors in various places and so on. So the original setup that I had when I was in Austin, and there is probably some video clips on YouTube about that, I had a picture from the back for quite a while that, you know, I had three big monitors and two littler ones and then my laptop and then my tablet. And it was just complete glass cockpit. It was beautiful. Well, looking at that now, I'm like, yeah, I could totally put three 24-inch monitors across where the windshield is and I'd still be able to see over the top, right? That's kind of important because I like to be able to see out. But at the same time, this is valuable space. So if I could take all of the computer stuff and put it up here, this is space that was never used before. I could get about 12 feet of empty space there. Then I could do the conversion there, which would involve replacing windows. I'll talk about that later. I've got some ideas. I'm not going to talk too much about it in case I don't do it, because I have a lot of videos of things that I talk about that don't get done yet. They might still happen kind of thing. But, I, you know, the bus windows are removable. They're very easily removable so that the guys in the bus garage, when a window breaks, you take out a few screws, pull the old window out, take a new replacement window, stick it in, and you're done. That, you know, it's like, I bet they could do one in about eight, eight or nine minutes. Just zip, 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 pull it out, maybe a little bit of sealant, put the new one in, put the screws in, walk away, you're done. You know, maybe not even eight or nine minutes. The guys that do it a lot, I bet they could do it pretty fast. Pretty easy. In fact, this window here, um, this window is also removable. This is probably the only bus window in existence that has a screen on it. You know, that's, it didn't come out very good, but I do have a screen mounted here so that I can let, at least let the wind blow through. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at that. Um, so I guess the next project, you know, so looking forward again, one, I would just, I just wanted to sit in the seat because I haven't sat in this seat hardly at all. It's actually fairly comfortable. Also, it's the seats that I have in the back were set really low to the floor because the spaceship would have a low ceiling. That's just the way I decided to do it. Well, I've got a six foot ceiling in here. And if I look at where the window is, I can sit a lot more upright than I was originally planning. Okay, so this is a good test to see, you know, this is a lot more comfortable just to sit here than it is to sit in the other seat. Although I like the other seats better. This is a, a comfortable position. So I'm looking at that, okay. Now that I know this is comfortable, now I can figure out what's it look like to put my monitors here. How much room do I have? You know, I wanna be able to see the view, you know, so I don't wanna cover all that up. Um, things like, let me do this without knocking it down. Steering wheel is easily removed. I've removed steering. I'm not actually, my thinking is I'm not going to remove the steering wheel because I don't have a steering wheel puller and it's not worth buying one for one time. However, I can take the whole steering column out. Also, there are some seriously worn out parts in here. Your wheel shouldn't turn that far. This was a real scary thing driving this 500 miles because <laughs> it was like, you know, you turn that far and the, you know, the bus would still go straight. And you'd be going down the road and all of a sudden it would come over the crown and it wanted to go the other way. That was frightening. So anyway, I'm not feeling too bad about taking parts of this apart. But I've got, I've got wiring bundles down here. They come off pretty easy. I got the steering column, the ignition switch. I can take all that apart. I know how to do that. Undo about four bolts in the front, pull the whole column out. That leaves a little hole. I just put something over the hole and I'm done. Now I don't have a steering wheel in the way. I'm gonna look really hard at my instrument cluster. I suspect that comes off about as easy as the trucks I used to work on. Uh, if so, it's a couple of connectors. I'll bet an hour I can remove this, maybe another hour for the steering wheel because I haven't done this exact one, but it's pretty easy. 
The battery is disconnected, so I'm not too worried about messing with the wires. I can just undo the connectors, pull them out of the way, zip tie them, leave it, okay? If I leave the pedals where they are, it doesn't really bother me. I can sit in this position and the pedals are just there. Um, this whole side, I think it's going to come out and I'll have a heater core in the bottom, which is a couple of wires for the fan and a couple of hoses for the heater core. Okay. I suspect there isn't much coolant left in the bus anymore because it had a pretty good leak. All right. So I'll drain that off, put it under the bucket, whatever, cap off the lines, get it out of the way. Then I'll have, a, you know, basically from the window over, it'll be completely empty again. This piece behind me I talked about, you can't really see it. There's a piece behind the seat that'll come out. What I want to do, come back around again, knock over everything else here. What I want to do, set myself up with this seat rotatable. And what I'm looking at is I could have a computer monitor facing this way. And then uh, maybe a spot for a laptop here. And I've got flies buzzing around like crazy right now. And if I rotate the seat all the way around, I could have my console walk wrapped all the way around. Okay, this is gonna be a problem. Shoo, shoo. Damn flies. Maybe they'll leave. We'll either let them out or let more in, right? Open the door for a while. Ah, that breeze is nice. I need that. Be nice to be able to open the window on that side where the door is. Okay, so what I'm thinking is if I could have the seat set up so that it would rotate all the way from this way to front to maybe facing out so you could get out and then sit down and then rotate the seat. Okay, a large part of what I'm doing with Mars Clipper going forward in the next six months, I think, I'm going to start it as a comic strip. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I've never done a comic strip before. I'm not really an artist. I never thought of myself as an author either, but I got um, what, three books on Amazon now. So sometimes what you think about yourself doesn't, you know, you don't want to let that hold you back. So my idea for Mars Clipper going forward, I want to start releasing it as, you know, a little bit every week as a comic strip and get the idea out there and see if anybody likes it, right? Because in my head, I've been doing it for 10 years and really nobody's seen it yet. That's kind of a dangerous place to, to do a story because you could do it the rest of your life and nobody would ever know it existed, all right? This way, you can get it out there. If nobody likes it, you can decide, well, do you want to do it for yourself or maybe change it because some people might like it if you changed it, all right? In the end, it's your story. You can do whatever you want with it, so... I just don't want to completely create it for any longer in a vacuum. All right? Maybe people would like it. Maybe they'd you know, pay money to see it, kind of a thing. Maybe it becomes the next Martian. I don't really expect that, but you know, I don't need to make a million dollars on it either. You know, if I made a few hundred dollars a month, that might change my life. I like those odds, right? Okay, so where I'm going with this is part of my process. Mars Clipper, I'm looking at it from about five or six different directions at the same time. It's going to be probably released first as a comic book, comic strip, which will be just straight to the internet. You know, it's going to be either on my website and or as video, but not animated video right? Because that just takes too long. You know, for one guy by himself with a job, that would be an enormous undertaking to try to create a video that would come out fast enough that people wouldn't lose interest. I think I can do a page a week and get that done, okay? And I've been writing the story for 10 years, so I got plenty of storyline. We're not going to run out of things to say in that respect. So going forward, what I'm looking at is if I got this area, and turn my seat sideways, I could put a drawing surface here and I'd have a nice area to draw that would have lots of light, right? And it wouldn't take up any room back there. Then I rotate the seat forward and I'd have my computer workstation. 
way I'm looking at this, because I'm really not an artist, if I start it with pencil sketches and then move into a digital workflow and do combinations of digital computer graphics, maybe a little bit of, I don't know, magic, something, you know, I haven't got that all hammered out yet. But having it all in one spot would be kind of handy. And then later on, if I do go forward with, you know, moving my door and continuing my workstation all the way across, I'd have room for two seats and monitors all the way across. It would still be just me, but I could have pencil art on one side and computer and video on the other side. And each place would have its own definite part of the workstation that would be unique to what I needed. You know, so I'd have a drawing surface, I'd have a scanner, I'd have my printer, I'd have, you know. My desk is always cluttered because I have too much stuff in one spot. So I'm hoping if I spread it out, I'll have just what I need there and it won't be in the way then. So that's kind of the idea going forward. Also, kind of the, the cherry on top. This will become the cockpit for the spaceship. It'll have that look about it. Going forward, if we if it ever gets to the point that I have a lot of people excited about it, I would love to be able to take this from a comic strip and maybe an animated series to go fully into live action. And if I can go into live action, this school bus just became the set for the actual spaceship. So when I'm talking about doing my bus conversion, it's going towards spaceship motif, not RV. Cool? Well, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, that should work. Cool. I do things differently. Oh, and please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon if you're really an awesome kind of person. Thank you so much for watching.